Now in this video I'm going to show you how to join mitered squares as you go. I've got a separate tutorial which shows you how to make a mitered square like this. This one has not been blocked. I'll pop up an image of what they look like when they have been blocked so you can get a better idea of what you're working for. The reason I didn't block this is because I do find that when you are working mitered squares together the pattern actually f f pulls it out naturally so you get more of a square and you probably need less blocking once you're done. When you're joining mitered squares you can sew them all together separately. If you're working big squares that can be quite effective. If you want a very portable project it can be effective to work them on their own and then join them later. But I love joining as you go. So I've got these beautiful colours that I'm going to work into the mitered minis pattern which is a pattern helping you uh, use up your ad yarn advents and also uh, it's a great stash busting pattern. So I'm going to show you, I think I'm going to take these three colours, I'm going to join a square here, join a square here and then join a square here. So the key thing to remember when you're joining mitered squares is you're always going to work into the back, so into the row ends. So first one I'm going to work, I'm going to work it here. So I'm going to start off and I'll demonstrate this as I go but it helps to have the concept before we start. So I'm going to join my yarn here and work a chain of 21. So this original mitered square had a chain of 42. One of those chains was the turning chain so you ended up with 41 stitches, one is the corner, I worked 19 single crochet, then I skipped a stitch, worked a single crochet into the corner and 19 stitches along the other side. So it's skip, single crochet, skip and then work to the end. So that had 39 stitches. So the way I'm going to work it now, I'm going to work half of that, so 21, one is the turning chain, we've got 20 stitches and this joining element will be my corner and then I'm going to pick up 19 stitches down these row ends. So there's 20 row ends here, 20 rows, I'm going to skip the first row end and then I'm going to pick up my 19 stitches along the row end, so that's going to be one stitch in each row end. Because we're working with single crochet, it's essentially a square stitch, that's US terms, it's double crochet if you use UK terms. So because they're a square stitch, it really helps you get that square look and it means you can just pick up one stitch for one row end. Just to recap, the first one, I'm gonna chain 21, work 19 single crochet, skip the last chain, work a single crochet into that corner, skip the first row and then work 19 stitches down into these row ends. Likewise with this one, I am going to attach my yarn here, chain 21, work 19 single crochet, then work one, skip the last chain, work one single crochet into that corner, skip the first row end and then pick up 19 row ends and working one single crochet into each row end and then you've got your basis for the mitered square. So the video I'll link to shows you how to work the mitered square. So just so you know what's coming I'm going to work the first square in this green then I'm going to work this uh, turquoise square into this row end and then this lighter pink into those two row ends. So each way you do it is slightly different but the principle is the same for each. So these two are the most similar, it's just you join in different places and th this one there'll be no chaining because I'll only be working in row ends. And I would just reiterate that you always, or certainly for the mitered minis pattern that I'm working, you work into these row ends. If you wanted to work into these other sides you could work it into those but you'd kind of have these corners pointing into each other so you'd end up with quite a different pattern. Totally something you could do uh, but I don't want to overcomplicate things any more than I already have. So I'm going to join this green yarn and we'll get started. Okay so I've joined my yarn and I was just put my yarn ball there and I'm going to start by chaining 21. Mm. 
So that is my 21. So one of those chains counts as the turning chain, which is that first one. Let's just bring you in a little bit closer. There we go. So I'm going to skip that and in the second chain I'm going to work a single crochet and then I'm going to work 18 more single crochets in these back bumps. I do have a separate video about working into chains if that's something that baffles you. So I'm going to work 19 single crochet and I should end up with one chain left unworked. There are my 19 single crochet and I've just got one chain unworked and then that's just my joining chain. So I'm going to skip that unworked chain and then my corner for this first round is going to be that same spot where I joined the yarn. So I will work one single crochet in there and then it will come to picking up the row ends. So you can see with the row ends because it's back loop only, you can see that's a row in there and that's a row in there, that's a row end, that's a row end. So it's quite easy to see how to work in them. So I'm going to miss that first row end there, that's my starting chain, so we'll miss that one and then we'll work into this slightly chunkier one. So I'm going to work one, then we've got this little skinny bit there, two, and keep repeating that pattern. Oops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. and that 19th one this stitch here is the single crochet three together used to finish the mitered square so that looks a little bit different there so I'm just going to work into that edge of that and that is number 19 oh, I've got to split my yarn there so that is the first row of the mitered square done and you can see although it's a bit wiggly at the moment this section here runs flush with that which is going to be the top if we look at where we were at the beginning like this you can see that's going to run along the top it doesn't look the prettiest at the moment but I assure you as we keep going it will all work out so for the next round, I'll just, sorry, the next row, I'll just show you quickly. So I'm going to work in the back loops here um, for the rest of this, uh, the rest of the square. I'm going to, did I chain one? This is always, you need to check. I did chain one. So I've chained one in turn, so this is going to be my first stitch. So single crochet in the back loop. I'm going to work 18 this time. I did 19 last time. Let's just count them. Five, 16, 17, 18. Let's just double check I can count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, phew. So that's my 18 single crochet in the back loop. For the corner, the decrease, I'm going to skip that stitch, work one single crochet in the back loop of the next stitch, and then skip the next stitch, and then work 
a single crochet in the next back loop only and then a single crochet back loop only to the end of that row which should be 18 in total on that side. If you want you can pop a stitch marker in that central decrease stitch. I talk all about this in the basic mitered square tutorial so again the link to that is in the comments if you want to get into detail about that. But basically that is the joining process so from here you'll see once I finish this row it will start to become a little bit more clear. The first few rows it's always a little bit twisty whenever you work into chains and it's actually quite good to have a table or something for your project to lean on when you're working like this so it doesn't drag it down too much. So that is my 18 along that side of chained and I'm going to just turn it around like so. Like so. It's quite easy to go the wrong way when you start so it's 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 always a good idea to have a little sense check. So there you can see essentially where it's joined and I'm going to keep working to fill in that square there. Uh, just to give you a little close up of the join it's actually quite a neat um, join I think you know I've got very contrasting colours here but because you're joining kind of evenly in those row ends you can see the join but I think it's quite it's quite pretty and looks quite um, natural. Okay I'm going to go away and work the rest of this square and then we'll come back and show you this one which is basically the same as this but I'll show you where to join it because that's the bit that can get a little bit tricky. There I have finished my second mitered square from where I joined here, went out like this, down and so on and so forth till I got to the end. Now before I work this one I just want to add a quick tip. This is going to be a cowl and this is the top of the cowl and I'm going to work out this way, always working into the back or the row ends. Uh, if I wanted, say I was making a blanket for example and this was going to be my raw edge so say or a scarf I was working and this was where I was going to finish. What I would do to neaten that up before fastening off I would just turn and I would work a single crochet into each row end just up to the top. What that does is just to give it a nice little uh, bind off. I do that in the scarf version of the mini mitered pattern. Uh, I'll link to the pattern so you can get a, a look at how that looks. I do it each each time rather than adding a border at the end which is an alternative because I'm using a range of different colours uh, I want the edge to match the, the coloured square but I could equally just do a big border around the whole thing at the end. I'm going to fasten off that one and I'll just pull the end through and then the next one I'm going to work is this turquoise into here. Now always work from the kind of front end back. If we look at this part as the front, whether you're left or right handed it might look like this. But the point is you always kind of work to the neater edge, so to the chain edge if you like. If I was to take this and work the next square here and then go back and try and work this one, it's going to make, I mean it's still doable, but it will mean that I'm picking stitches up this way so instead of working the square down like this and up and back I'd be working it in reverse. So if you want it to look consistent then always work back. I'm just going to join this yarn to this end. This is where I started my first square. I'm just going to pop that in there pop it in a little bit closer. So once again we're going to follow the same process that I did previously. I'm going to chain 21 and then I'm going to work in the second chain from hook 19 single crochet. That's a single crochet in the second chain and the next 18 chains and I'm not counting so I'll pause in a minute to check. Um, and then I will work to one but the one chain from the end, skip the last chain, work the center stitch into this 
place where I joined the yarn and then I'll pick up my 19 row ends again and you can see obviously this is still quite um, it's very not square so where the, the decrease is it kind of pulls in but the more squares we add the more that's going to naturally even out it will be interesting to see how it looks after I've done four compared to now I'm just going to finish my chain I'm going to go away and count and work my 19 single crochet and then I'll come back and just show you working into the row ends again I have worked my 21 chains and then I've worked from the second chain put my 19 single crochets one into each chain I've got one chain unworked there which I'm going to skip and then I'm going to work a single crochet into the same place I joined the yarn Just pull that nice and tight and that is my center decrease then I am going to skip this first row end and I'm going to pick up my 19 row ends which will take me to this single crochet three together so one two three when you work into these you almost work into the kind of V of the stitch on alternate row ends and then you just have that little thin part on the other side Nineteen. I'm just going to work into the those two stitches of that single crochet three together. I don't know if you can see that. So that is my nineteen stitches. You can see how it's starting to work out if we flip it back to how we started. we're looking at working there so I'm going to go away and I'll work the rest of that mitered square and then I'll come back and I'll just quickly show you how I pick up the row ends for this one which will be the last one okay so there is the third square that I've joined again still a bit curly and wonky but I think these are starting to pull out so the last one is this pink one which I'm going to join here so essentially it's going to follow the same path as this one I could join it here and work like that so starting there starting the opposite corner and that will be similar to this green one because if you remember we chained along here and then began working like that I'm going to join it here because the rest of the squares in this cowl which is going to work down here are going to go this this way so I'm going to work a chain here and join another one the same I've done this and then across and across so this will make sure consistency whether it makes a huge difference or not honestly I'm not entirely sure but um, I prefer to be consistent when I can so let's join this and we shall pick up these row ends so I've joined my pink yarn you can see it's starting to get a little bit tail rich now I prefer to wait to the end after I've blocked to sew my tails but you must do as you will so I'm just going to chain one to start the row that's not going to count as a stitch and then I'm going to once again pick up my 19 row ends so I, at this time I'm starting in that bottom corner so I'm going to start you can see that is the single crochet three together which was used to finish the square so I'm going to start in that row end and I'm going to pick up 19 and then I will miss the last row end I'm just going to catch that uh, turquoise uh, tail underneath for a couple of rows so three let's just drop that now I will still sew that in later there is 19 and you can see that last row end is where I've joined it I'm then going to join 
for my center so again we've got the single crochet three together right in the center and I'm just gonna work my center decrease single crochet in there and then we'll rotate 90 degrees so you can see all oh, these colors are nice you can see how that looks with the row ends and then I'm going to pick up 19 again so I'm going to miss this first one and I'm going to start here and pick up my 19 and that's going to be row one of my mitered square done so one two three I'm just going to zoom you in on these so you can see a bit more Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. Of thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and again that nineteenth is in that corner single crochet three together, and that's going to be my nineteen, and then just tuck in that tail out of the way there. I get to turn and work the mitre square as I have done before so 18 single crochet back loop only skip a stitch work a single crochet back loop in that corner decrease skip a stitch and then 18 single crochet back loop only up to the end then 17 16 so on and so forth I'm going to do that and then I'll show you the finished result and we'll just have a little look at how these have pulled out into sort of squares. So I'm coming to the last couple of rows so I've just got five stitches left one skip one one in the center skip one one whoops and then my last stitch to finish is my single crochet three together in the back loops and then a little chain one to fasten that off there you see it's coming together so obviously when it's blocked it's gonna kind of square out like this this is, like I say, it's quite a bouncy yarn. It's lovely. It's got a lovely squish to it. So I'm very excited. It's going to be super warm, this cowl. So I'm going to go away and finish the cowl. This is basically how we're going to continue with the joining. I'll finish off this project, block it, and then I'll come back and show you the finished treat. So in these stills that are coming up on the screen at the moment you can see the process where I continue to join mitered squares and then block them. You can see how that um, kind of wiggly texture flattens out quite easily with blocking. And here we have the finished mitered minis cowl so you can see I'm not sure which my original set of four joins were but you can see how I've continued to use these joins working in the row ends to create this cowl pattern. So I hope you found this a useful tutorial. There's so much you can do with mitered squares. I have a mitered minis pattern which will give you tons of ideas but really any place, any crochet project that you can use square motifs you can apply this mitered square joining technique. So I hope you found that useful, please subscribe for more crochet goodness.